Okay, go back to this five steps to victory. The five steps to victory is like this, that whenever we know we have some negative thinking, negative emotions or sins or any kind of problem, we are aware of it. Oh, I have some negative thinking now. I'm worried now. I'm happy now. I'm frustrated now. I might be blowing up now. So we become aware. And then, next step is believe that it's destructive, that it will affect interpersonal relationship, it will affect the ministry, it will affect the family, it will affect uh, my relationship with God. And then apply biblical principle. So the Bible says that anger doesn't accomplish God's righteousness. So I realized that uh, it's not helpful and uh, also it will hurt uh, the feeling of the people. So I realized that I need to handle that. And then Four, pray to have forgiveness and strength. Please forgive me for being angry, having an angry thought. Please forgive me. And uh, you know, I notice that. Okay, it's very problematic for some reason. I don't know. Um, but I'll keep going now. So, P Pastor Silas, please let me know if it's wor working well. Okay, now, so, what the Bible teaches us to, is to forgive and to put down the problems and set our eyes on Jesus. And then, number five, I choose to have positive thinking and emotions. I choose to believe that God is helping me, God is blessing me, God will strengthen me, and God is happy that I'm doing all these things. So, these are the positive thinking. And then, now how do we build up positive thinking? How do we build up positive thinking? Now positive thinking is found all in the Bible. And here I give some examples of the positive thinking. Because the positive thinking will affect our emotions. As, as I, I just show this ABC uh, picture, the model of ABC emotional uh, uh, way of control uh, or managing our emotions now this is also found in the bible i will i'm going to show you that so when the belief is wrong then people will have negative emotions when people believe that i'm no use people don't like me then they will have negative emotions but then if people believe that i'm important uh even if something goes wrong it doesn't matter it's not the end of the world that way they have positive thinking and then the consequence will be better that he'll have more joy okay now these are some positive thinking in Jesus first God loves me strongly all the time not because I'm good but because he's love God is love therefore he's happy with me all the time he loves me all the time and number two God has a wonderful plan in our lives we are very precious in God's sight there is only one me I'm the only me here and there are many things that God wants me to do I'm important in God's sight. Now this is not pride. This is believing what God has promised that He has a wonderful plan in our life. And number three, even if we have sinned much, God still wants us back. When we repent, He is super happy. Now of course we, we don't want to stay in sin. But if someone stays in sin, we can still come to God and say, Lord, I'm really sorry for my sins. Please forgive me and wash me clean of my sins. And God is very happy to forgive us. So we need to believe that God really is happy to forgive us. We don't have to continue to feel bad. We, we can thank God all the time I'm, uh, that I'm repenting. God is helping me. God is helping me. And God is happy that I'm improving. Then, um, then it will help us to realize that God is happy when we repent. Even when we have sins, uh, we can put, it, put the sins down. Number four. God can help us to live a joyful and fruitful life. So God is uh, helping me now to live a joyful and happy, fruitful life that I can bear more fruit. And He will continue to help us. If we stay in Him, He will make His plan come true in my life. And my, I am very important, very important. Uh, he has an important plan for me and it will come true when I follow God. And then number five, God doesn't mind how weak we are. He can give us strength and wisdom. So even though I'm weak, God is still, 
you know, happy that I come to Him. That it doesn't matter if I'm weak. God is still happy to help me. Okay. Now, even when things don't are not right, when things go very wrong, wrong, we can still rejoice in God. Now, here I'm using the the theory of A B C, a management of emotions here, to say to show how in the Bible it teaches that this is actually. Uh, you know, people discover this truth, which is also, you know, which is found in the Bible. Habakkuk, three seventeen to eighteen. Though the fig trees may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, and the field yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold. And there be no hurt in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in the God of my salvation. Now here, Habakkuk is showing his faith in God. Even though the fig tree may not blossom, and there is no fruit on the vines, and the labor uh, fail, that is no, I mean the olive fail, and the fields yield no food, and the flocks. A kill, a cut off, and uh, there is no hurt in the stalls. Even if everything go wrong, I will still rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God of my salvation. God gives me salvation, so I'm happy of God. I'm happy God is saving me and helping me, even though things are not going right. God will help me, and when I trust in God, the problem will go away, and God will make the best of my life. Now, uh. Sometimes we face difficulties. It doesn't mean God doesn't help us. Difficulties is just part of life. Everyone has difficulties because there are sins in the world. So the world is full of different kinds of difficulties. People serving God still have difficulties. What is the help of God? We can still have the joy of God, the strength of God, and uh, uh, and appreciation from God and uh, and the blessings from God. So we have all this, even though things may be difficult. So we want to continue to trust in God. Okay, and then the next slide. So even when things go wrong, when Habakkuk have faith in God, then he can rejoice in the Lord. So even when there are difficulties, we can still rejoice in the Lord. Okay, this next passage, Psalm seventy-seven, verse three. I remember God and was troubled. I complained and my spirit was overwhelmed. Verse nine: Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has He in anger shut up His tender mercies? And I said, This is my weakness. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remem remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember Your wonders of old. Now this passage here. Talks about the psalmist. He was in some kind of emotional problem, and he was complaining to God. So when I when he remembered God, he was troubled. When he remembered God, he was troubled because he uh, maybe he has some problem. So he was troubled, and then and my spirit was overwhelmed when he complained. So he asked this question: Has God forgotten to be gracious to me, and has He in anger shut up His tender mercy? So has God forgotten to be merciful to me and take away His mercies? And then when he thought about it, he said, "This is my weakness. It's my weakness. But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High." So he chose to remember the good things of God in the past, the years of the right hand of God. The right hand means the The uh, the good works of God, all the good things that God has done in the past years. So I'm going to remember all those good things that God has been doing in the past, and I'm going to rejoice because of that. And I remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember your wonders of old. So when he remembers all the wonderful things of God, then he is more positive and more joyful. So this very important that we. Choose to think about good things. So he was sad, and then he chose to think about God's good thing, and then he had joy. Now, in the last slide, when things go wrong, when we believe God is blessing us, then we have joy. 
And then when things go wrong and people don't believe, then they will be sad. So Habakkuk chose to believe that God is blessing him, so he has joy. But many Christians, when things go wrong, they will complain to God and they become sad. I want to say this, I have experienced many unpleasant experiences. My first response, you know, our natural response was still unhappy. I felt unhappy. But then I say, God is good. God has been good to me all these years. God will be blessing me. So I chose to think about the good things of God and say, even though things are not going right right now, but God is helping me and things will go better later. And even in the difficult times, I can still benefit from God and God is still blessing me. So I choose to think about the good things of God and, and not to let the negative things affect me. So that's what I've been doing. Now, joyful victory, I'm teaching from this uh, teaching, joyful victory. It's a teaching that God has given me and I have applied for many years. I, I have been you know, attacked by people, people yell at me, people hurt me, things did not go right. But I believe that when I follow God, I seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these good things will happen to me. God will bring good things to me. So I choose to believe in God and follow God and not to be affected by people, not to be affected by situation. So that's something I learned from experience. But many Christians have this habit. Many Christians have the habit of when things go wrong, they don't believe in God and then they become sad. Okay? Now, 1 Peter 2.9, this is another verse that helps us to have positive thinking. 1 Peter 2.9, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, His own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of Him who call you out of darkness into His marvelous light. So here it tells us that we are a chosen generation, a generation chosen by God, a group of people chosen by God, a royal priesthood that we are the priests of God to guide people to come to God. So we are the middleman between God and man. We can bring people to God and bring God to people. We are royal priesthood and we are a holy nation that we are a nation of God, a holy nation of God and his own special people we are very special now but from the world very often we receive negative inputs we want to forget about those we want to remember the positive input from God that we are God's special people that we may proclaim the praises of him who call you out of darkness into his marvelous light that God want us to proclaim proclaim the wonderful things the wonderful things of God. He wants us to proclaim the praises of Him, to proclaim the praises of God who call us out of darkness into His marvelous light. That he, we came from darkness, come darkness of sin and darkness of emotional problem. And now He call us into His marvelous light, His wonderful light that we can enter His wonderful light. Okay, now, so this passage will apply to us when we have negative self-image when we have negative self-image then we believe God makes us special then we have healthy self-image so even when we have low self-image that we say oh I'm not doing so well I, I, I'm not doing great things that we can still say okay I believe that God will make me special and then I can have special healthy self-image again but when we have uh, self, low self-image and then we continue to feel bad we say oh I'm no good I'm not doing well it's terrible when we have this negative feelings negative uh, feeling that we continue to have then we'll have unhealthy self-image so this is something we want to continue to do and say I want to enjoy the positive thinking of God that I mean the positive thinking that come from God I mean, oh. So when we have special, uh, when we have low self-image, we want to choose to believe that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. I'm a priest of God. I'm a holy nation. Uh, I am His own special people. Then we can have healthy self-image again, that we are like a soldier of God. Very special, very powerful. Now this 
theory actually we can apply from the Bible first for most people is the negative event and then they have irrational belief they will say oh I'm terrible I'm not doing well people don't like me there is no hope and then then they have negative emotions so when people um, they have irrational belief Re irrational means unreasonable that oh God is not helping me people are not helping me I'm no use I can do nothing but then when we have rational belief from the Bible that we are important God is helping me God is blessing me then we can have healthy emotion that we have uh, now he put here healthy negative emotion uh, I would say that we can begin to have joy, we begin to have strength. Okay, now here is uh, A, B, C, D, E, F. So it's extend, uh, extension of the A, B, C. So A is activating event and then the belief and then C consequence, the emotions. And then D is disputing intervention. That means Dispute means disagree. I disagree with what I believe. I've been believing that I'm no use. I believe that no people like me. I believe that uh, God is not helping me. Those are wrong beliefs. I want to change. So I change my beliefs that I'm important. I, I'm precious. So I change my belief. And then the effect, the E is the effect. So D is disputing. E is the effect that, that it affect our thinking our emotions and then F would be new feelings so this is A B C D E F it's a new way of thinking of changing the original response now some people say that's not my natural response it's something we can learn we can train ourselves even when things go wrong when someone yell at me naturally people get angry and yell back but we can say I'm important what I'm doing is right if I do something wrong I'll ask the person to forgive me. Please forgive me. I've done something wrong. I'll try to do uh, right again. And then, and then we can say, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it correctly now. I don't have to feel bad. Even though I, I did wrong before, I can ask God and people to forgive me. I can forget about the past and I can be joyful again. And then we choose to praise the Lord to have the joy of the Lord I can rejoice in the Lord hallelujah I can rejoice in the Lord even though I did something wrong earlier it's no point to continue to think about all the negative things we have done that's why the Bible says forget about the past okay and then Psalm, 1, 6, uh, Psalm 16 verse 8 here is talk about the close relationship with God will help us will give us joy and comfort and strength. Psalm 16 verse 8, I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh will also rest in hope. So here, David said that, I have set the Lord always before me. I am I'm always having a close relationship with him. I always think about God. So I'm setting God in front of me. Because he is at my right hand, he is with me, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad. Therefore, I can rejoice and my glory rejoices. Uh, that could mean my, my spirit rejoices. My whole person rejoices. And my flesh, my body will also rest in hope. So in fact, my body also. God created our body and he can uh, bless our body. When we pray to God, many people feel peaceful and joyful and burdens go away. Now, for, uh, from the Bible, we can see that when uh, John saw Jesus in Revelation chapter 1, verse 17, he fell down. So God's power can affect a person. And then when Saul chased after Jesus, and then he saw Jesus, and then he also fell down. And then when uh, Jesus was about to be arrested by the soldiers when he said I am the soldiers fell back so these are cases when God's presence can affect people's body when, pe when people are affected by God strongly then they would fall down when it's not so strong people could sway and they could feel comfort to the body it's like floating so when people 
pray to the Lord, gradually they feel more and more relaxed and they can feel a swaying, a power pushing the body to sway. And that came from God and it will bring comfort to the body. That God created a body that our body can feel relaxed and burdens go away and we can feel a feeling of comfort. And many, I pray for many sick people and they instantly feel better. So that's also the presence of God. So just now we talk about how to handle the negative feelings, the thinking, you know. If we think correctly according to the Bible, we can put down the negative emotions. If someone yells at me, I can say, okay, if I've done something wrong, I'll say sorry. If I didn't do anything wrong, I don't have to be angry. I don't have to be affected by the person. I can say, uh, it's okay, I'm sorry if I make you feel unhappy and I want to have a good relationship with you again. I try to do my best uh, and, and then we, we can forget about the past and still be peaceful with the person. So change the, the thinking. And then we can praise the Lord in our heart to restore the joy. We can say, God, I have succeeded this time to trust in you. I can put down the negative emotions. I can rejoice in you again. I can rejoice and relax in you. Hallelujah! That way, we can have the joy of the Lord again. So, it, we have to use our mind to handle the situation. And then we use our spirit to worship God to have the joy. So we need both. Our thinking has to be changed and then our, uh, we can praise God to restore our emotions. Okay, and God is a God of inner, inner healing. God wants to bring healing. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound. And then in verse 2, to comfort all who mourn. In verse, th verse 3, the oil of joy for mourning. So here it says that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. The Spirit of God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good news. So the Holy Spirit has come upon Isaiah to preach the good news. And Jesus said that this uh, this Bible passage is fulfilled in your sight also when Jesus was in the synagogue. And so this passage was first fulfilled by Isaiah and then fulfilled by Jesus. And then now it's fulfilled by us too. The Holy Spirit will come upon us to anoint me to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, of His salvation. And then He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, that we can go out and heal the brokenhearted, people who are sad, and to proclaim claim liberty to the captives, people who are uh, captured by the negative emotions, affected by the negative emotion that they are affected, that we can bring healing to them and liberty, freedom to them, that will open the prison to those people who are captured by the negative emotions and to comfort those people who are mourn and oil of gladness for the people who are mourning. Now this is something I experienced many many times after I experienced the Holy Spirit in 1998 when uh, Carlos Anaconda from Argentina went to Hong Kong and I received his laying on of, hand, of his hand I experienced great power enter me and great love enter me and I felt so touched by the love of God I cried for a long time that I experienced this healing the inner healing my, and this healing went on for a period of time. Many times when I pray, I felt burdens and hurt feelings go away. And then later when I pray for people, I find that many people cried and then they said all the sadness in the past went away. The hurt feelings went away. So it not only helped me, but it helped me to help other people. So when we have this inner healing of God, when we come to God more and trust in God, and worship God and enjoy Him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're so wonderful that we enjoy God. His healing will come to us. And then when we have this healing and then also we uh, have taken care of the sins in our life, taken care of problems in our life, not necessarily completely, but mostly that we have taken care of this problem and we have found no evil spirit in our life 
then we can start to lay hands on people for healing for other people. The more we pray, the more we'll carry this anointing for healing to people. Then it, will, it can bring healing to other people. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. That God can, can use us to bring healing to people. So uh, now as to how to do inner healing, we will talk about that uh, in another session. How to do inner healing. Mainly is first the person has to have the right relationship with God. He has to come in repentance to God and ask God to forgive him and to take care of any problem in the relationship with God. If he has anger toward God, he has a negative feeling toward God, all this has to be taken care of. That he learn to believe that God is loving me, God is blessing me, God has blessed me all these years, He has done many good things to me. So I want to thank God to restore this thankfulness in their life and, and also to put down the sins. So that's the first step, the relationship with God. And then have to handle the negative thinking. Uh, for instance, some people say, my family has hurt me, my spouse has hurt me, people have hurt me, things have been difficult, and they have all this negative thinking. It has to be taken care of. Now, we all have negative experiences. I have had many negative experiences that there are people who hurt me even recently. Some people have hurt me. But then I say, I choose not to be affected by them. I choose to be gentle with them. I choose to forgive I choose to put down those problem, problems, I choose to be nice to them, I choose to thank God so that I, my joy can come back to me. So I choose to put down all those negative things. So this has to be handled with our mind, that we, from the teaching from the Bible, we put, put down the problems. And then we come to God and praise Him and worship Him for Him to come and restore our spirit. And there are different ways that we can bring in uh, healing, that we can comfort ourselves and say, I'm loved by God, and in the past you have failed, but it doesn't matter. <clears throat> now God forgives you and gives you a new chance again, that you have a new hope and you can restore what, uh, what you have lost in the past and God will bless you. So all this positive thing can heal us. We can choose to be healed by God and rejoice in God, in, in the Lord, and so that we can forget about the past and forget about people and not to be affected by people and not to be affected by our own failures, not to be affected by the accusation of people and to believe that God forgives me, God accepts me. When I love God and follow God, He will bless me. So it's very important to let go of the past and start to follow God closely. When we follow God closely, then uh, even when people attack us, we can say, God is happy with me. Even when people attack me, it doesn't matter. Okay, and then this is another verse that helps us to have positive thinking uh, about handling our hurt feelings, our negative emotions. We can come to God with confidence to God to get help. In Hebrews 4.16, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we can come boldly with courage. I can come to God anytime, anytime. We won't be bothering God. God doesn't mind us coming to Him. I can come with confidence. Every time I come to Him, He will accept me. He will listen to me. He will respond to me. He will help me. To the throne of grace. The throne of God is the throne of grace. It's a, a place of he gives grace to us that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we can obtain mercy and grace to help us in time of need. When we are in difficulties, He will continue to help me so I can let go of the problems. I can continue to have strength and I thank God He gives me strength and I thank God I'm asking for help. So we can appreciate ourselves for coming to God for help. I thank God I'm growing. I'm coming to God for help. I'm trusting in God. I'm growing in God. I thank God that God is helping me to grow. And I thank God for that. And I appreciate myself. And I can be happy that I'm growing and trusting in God. That is not pride. That is, that is naming the fact that we are coming to God. And God is happy with me. So am I. I can be happy with myself. And then we need to learn to clear all garbage from the hearts. The garbage are the negative things people did to me how people hurt me, 
my failure, my low self-image, everything negative in our heart. We want to clear those. And it takes time. So every day when we pray, when we think about the experiences in the past, we'll say it doesn't matter. I, have, I can forget about it. God is still loving me. God is blessing me. Actually, God is very happy with me when I come to Him. God is loving me with a very strong love so I can relax in Him. I can forget about the people who hurt me. They cannot take away anything from me. Thus, uh, Satan came to steal, kill, and to destroy. But God comes to restore. Even though Satan has destroyed something in the past, but God can restore it again in the future. So I don't have to be affected by people. Okay, now how do we have the motivation to manage our thinking and emotions? Where does the motivation come from? First, God loves me. He has planned to do great things in my life. So he's, He has great love for me. I'm very special. We are very precious, very special. So God's love means that I'm important. He has a wonderful plan in my life. Nobody can take away God's love. And we are precious. We should treasure our lives. We can become great people. Everyone. Everyone. Now some of you might say, No, I cannot do anything great. Uh, I have no education. I have no strength. I have no spiritual strength. Anyone who, have, who has no spiritual strength, we just need to come to God and say, Lord, I need your help. I need your help. Please help me. And we praise God. God is helping me. It's very important not just to ask, but to praise God that He's helping us because God wants to help us. So we say, praise God that you're helping me, you're blessing me, you are lifting my life up, I can go higher and higher. This way, we'll become, uh, you know, be able to enter God's wonderful plan. And we are always precious, but when we enter God's plan, then we become precious, more and more precious. Now many Christians, they're always precious by nature but they have not applied the preciousness to their life. That the, even though they are precious in the sight of God, they have a precious life, but they have wasted their life, they have been affected by sins and by people, so they don't become precious people. They have this precious status in front of God, but they have not applied to their life, so their life is full of garbage, full of hatred, full of frustration, anger, negative emotions. So the life has not applied, they have not applied the good things of God to their life. But if we trust in God and love God and follow God and obey God, then our life will become more and more precious. The preciousness God has planned for me will come true. If it's for everyone. The more we follow God, our life, the more our life will go better. Now, uh, two days ago, someone asked a question. What if we teach people to motivate people to love God and they don't obey? We motivate people to pray and they don't obey. Then we'll tell them, you know, then you're on your own. And when you be, depend on yourself, you have no guarantee. And, uh, and God doesn't like people who don't depend on Him. And then the good things from God doesn't come to you. But if you trust in God, if you restore your relationship with God and obey Him and love Him and serve God and glorify God, then God will put all kinds of blessings in your life and your life will go higher and higher. Do you want that to happen to you? So I hope everyone has this motivation. I want the best to happen to me. God is the best person in the whole world, whole universe. He is the best and He is the most powerful and only He can bless me. So there are all reasons that we want to follow God because He can make the best to happen to us. And then uh, the motivation is negative thinking emotions destroy our life. So I don't want to let negative thinking emotions control my life. And, and number four, it's not, worthy, it's not worthy to be affected by negative people. It's not, it's not worthy that you know when people try to affect me, it's not worthy to be affected by them. It doesn't matter um, if they yell at me, if they say negative things, it doesn't matter. It, uh, they cannot take away the good things of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And then number five, we will regret of our negative thinking and emotions when we go to heaven. So this is a motivation. One day when we, go to, when we go to heaven, we'll say, oh, how come I had all these negative thinking and emotions? I was sad every day. And so I could not 
fulfill the plan of God that was planned for me so my life has a lot of problems then we'll regret so we don't want to regret so we say I don't want to regret because if I live like this one day I will regret if I don't obey God I will regret if I don't pray I will regret if I'm affected by people we will regret so this five motivation first God loves me very much and he wants to do th great things in my life and we are precious we want to do the best to treasure our lives and make the best of our lives and negative thinking emotions will only destroy and it's not worthy to be affected by negative people these people are negative they always hurt people I don't have to be affected by them so even if the person is our spouse we want to bless them but if they are having the if they have the habit of yelling at us they always get angry they always gamble they always do terrible things we don't have to be affected by them and then we need to think of how we can handle the problem with them that's next thing but first we don't want to be affected by them that we still want to pray for them and bless them but we don't want to be affected by them it's not worthy because they have problems and then number five if we continue to be affected by the world by other people we regret it when we go to heaven so we don't want to regret at the time I want to be uh, happy that I've lived my life to the fullest okay next point is we need to understand that our emotions are very fast if something happens to us our immediate response is fear worry anger frustration immediately and our thinking comes later that we say is it necessary is it necessary for me to be angry is it necessary for me to be frustrated do I have to be affected by people so it takes time for us to pick up the ability to think about a situation and handle it so we need to realize that our emotions are very fast it will come very fast so I want to be able to stop it before it will destroy my life so we need to keep managing our emotions keep managing what does that mean oh I'm unhappy now so I can I'm unhappy because someone hurts me because someone yelled at me I can put this down I don't have to keep thinking about it I can think about the good things of God God is blessing me God is doing good things in my life so I can rejoice in the Lord and then that way I choose to rejoice I choose to put down the negative emotions I choose to forget about the, uh, what people do to me the negative things people do to me that way then our thinking will catch up with the emotions and then we can have more joy and more strength okay now some people say my husband has so many problems my spouse has so many problems some church member have so many problems my co-workers have so many problems what can we do now just now we are just talking about how to manage our own emotions and thinking in the future we need to talk about how to handle problems with people how can we help those people and so here we first manage our emotions before we can manage problematic people to manage problematic people is another big thing how to manage those people so in Matthew 18 15 talk about managing the people now if we manage the people we first manage ourselves so that we are peaceful we don't want to come to people with anger and then try to manage the problem it, it, it will hurt the situation how many times have we been you know handle problem with anger and frustration and with words that hurt people that way it's not going to achieve anything good so we want to first manage our emotions that we come to the Lord and praise God and enjoy God and have the strength of the Lord and then pray for wisdom how to handle the problem we want to think about the problem how to handle it and pray and take time before we go back to the person to handle it and uh, but many people they would handle it right away when they're angry they'll say well I have a divorce I'm going to run away I, I'm going to give up now all these are rushy decisions so we don't want to make rushy decisions we want to calm down at that time find a place that we can calm down and then have a peaceful heart and pray about it and think about it and then manage it later when we manage problems we also have to think about whether the person will be willing to manage the problems you know because there are many people who are not willing to manage problems and there are people who are stubborn they don't want to change then some people we have to let go we change ourselves we don't change them we just love them hopefully they will change one day 
sometimes we have members, uh, family members who are very emotional, very negative, and we found that so many times we're trying to change, it doesn't change. Then we need to change ourselves. But at the same time, I want to say this. Many people say, my family members, they are terrible, and then every time I handle it, it's always uh, end in fighting and yelling. Now, sometimes we have to rethink for ourselves too. Did we handle it with anger and frustration and negative words and criticism? If we handle it with negative emotions and criticism, it will never have good results. So sometimes it's the problem in ourselves too. So we need to calm down and ask God for wisdom to handle the situation. So when we have managed our emotions and pray for, to God for, uh, for wisdom, then we can do this in Matthew 18, 15. Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault be between you and him alone. So go to him alone to talk about it. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. 16. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. So if he listens to us, then we'll, that thing is solved. But if not, then we bring one or two with us to witness the situation and talk together. And then the Bible verse continues by saying, if they don't listen, if the person doesn't listen, then we go to the church and handle it together. Now this is handling the situation. But many times when people handle the situation, they handle it with frustration and anger and accusation. It doesn't help. Now even though you might say, it's him who has done something wrong, still we don't want to handle it with anger. We want to handle it with peace and love and joy and patience and kindness. Now that we need to talk about some other time. Okay, and then uh, for emotions, it's very important is our life, how our life is. In Psalm 90, verse 14, the Psalm of Moses, Oh, satisfy us early with your mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. So, satisfy us early in our life with your mercy, with your love, that we can rejoice and be glad all the days of our life, that all the days of our life will be filled with joy. And that is a wonderful way to live our life. And the best way to stay in God's love all the time is, you know, the best way is to stay in God's love all the time. Then we have joy all the time. So the positive way is to stay in the presence of God. Then we have joy. And then we take away the garbage, not to be affected by people. But the most important way is to stay in the presence of God, to have the joy of the Lord to have the strength of the Lord, to have the peace and patience of the Lord, then we can live in peace every day. And then when someone hurts us, then we'll say, it doesn't matter because I have the joy of the Lord, I have the help of the Lord, I don't have to be affected by people, and I can rejoice in the Lord, I can trust in God. Hallelujah. That way, we will have more strength. Now for me, Every time I pray, I experience the joy of the Lord. Every time I pray, Hallelujah, the joy of the Lord will come. So I stay in the joy of the Lord all the time. Hallelujah, praise you, Father, praise you, Father. And then any time I notice, I'm not joyful. I know, I know that something has gone wrong. Maybe someone has said something negative to me. Maybe I'm affected by someone. Then I say, I, can, I need to handle that. So if we stay in joy all day long, then when anything wrong goes, anything goes wrong, then we know it. We notice it quickly. But some people, they all day long, they just live in frustration and negative feelings. Many people live in situations like that. That way, he's not glorifying God. He's just, even if he served God, he's just doing ministry. He's not glorifying God from his life. But if we are filled with the joy of the Lord, then whatever we say, we do, it shows the love of God and the joy of the Lord. That way, we are glorifying God. So I hope we all live in this joy the, in the presence of God, live in the love of God, so that we are filled with joy. Instead of filled with frustration and pressure and guilt and negative thinking, but we want to live in joy and enjoy life. Now, uh, I want to say that it's not an easy process to handle our negative 
thinking and emotions. Now I want to share this about myself because in my family when I was young uh, there was a divorce and my stepmother came and then uh, I started to have bad dreams and also I have I, I walk in my dream and it affected me for years because it sank sank into my heart sank into my subconscious mind and um, now how can I get healed from that I uh, I noticed that even when I became a Christian I improved but then my greatest improvement was after I experienced the Holy Spirit that I live in the joy of the Lord all day long and I forget about the past and I put down the past and I say uh, they are also suffering because of their sins and and they are uh, they don't have Jesus and therefore they are suffering and therefore they have negative emotions now I continue to witness to them I continue to bless them but their behavior in the past was because they have lived in uh, they have sins and they have problems so I, so I can have compassion on them and forgive them and forget about the negative uh, impact on me and I keep saying my life is precious I'm loved by God I'm very important uh, and then I let go of the negative emotions also in my ministry in my early ministry I have received pressure from a co-worker who has gossiped about me many times and uh, give me much pressure and I and the bad dreams came back and I uh, in the process I learned to let go in that period of time I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit yet but I kept holding to God holding on to God Lord Jesus help me help me Lord Jesus I need you I need you I thank you and I sang and I prayed to God and at that time I started to sing the Bible verses uh, and different songs oh hallelujah the Lord is with me Hallelujah, thank you Jesus. So I, I sang and I prayed to God a lot. And in the process I felt more and more relieved. I felt more and more joy and peace. So it was a process that God has taught me. And, uh, and then finally later I wrote this teaching from my own experience, joyful experience. How to overcome negative thinking and emotions. So you can, if you have questions you can write down now and send it to me with WhatsApp and then I can look at it and then I can if you can send it right away I can answer it right away and in, at this time I'm going to lead a prayer now if you have questions you can immediately send it with WhatsApp and then I can read it I can answer after the prayer now I will invite you to stand up and relax think of Jesus loving us think of Jesus helping us Jesus treasures us and we want to let go of all the hurt experiences all the hurtful experiences in the past how people hurt us we want to let go so at this time I'm going to lead you in a prayer I ask for inner healing for anyone who pray together here now oh Lord Jesus we thank you we praise you you are God of love you are a God of love. You love us very much. You care about us. You know that most people have negative thinking and emotions. Most people have been hurt by others. We all have been hurt by others. We need you to heal us, Lord Jesus. You are a God of healing. You came to heal us. Thank you, Jesus. Oh Jesus, set my spirit free that I might worship you. Set my spirit free that I might praise your name. Let all burdens go that I might worship you set my spirit free to worship you 
set my spirit free that I might worship you set my spirit free that I might praise your name let all bondage go that I might worship you set my spirit free to worship you Lord Jesus we want to push worship you we want to put down our burdens we want to put down all our hurtful experiences we want to put down our negative emotions we don't have to feel bad because all the things that has happened to us we can be joyful in you because you're a loving God you're a joyful Lord hallelujah hallelujah rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice 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 and again I say rejoice oh Lord help us to rejoice in you too thank you for all the blessings you're a wonderful God you're a joyful God you're a God of healing you're a wonderful God we trust in you we love you we like you we worship you we adore you we need you and we know that when we come to you you're always happy and you want to bless us thank you Jesus it's so wonderful to have you it's so wonderful to have you I love you I adore you I enjoy you please bring healing to us please help us Lord Jesus we know that some of the people here has been hurt by other people many times some of people are hurting from the heart from the bottom of the heart Lord Jesus come and touch the heart let them know that they are precious everyone here is precious we are all very precious in the sight of God we are important in the sight of God God did not forget about us we were hurt because we are living in a world of sin that this world is full of sin so we are sometimes hurt by people we want to let go of these hurtful experiences we want to forget about them uh, because these people they have been hurt by others so they hurt us so help us to to have compassion on them know that knowing that they have been hurt by others so we want to have compassion on them and pray for them and bless them and and we want to pray for them and we want to let go of the hurtful experiences we want to forget about the negative words we want to forget about all these experiences in the past the negative experiences we want to praise God and want to bless these people we want to bless them oh Lord have mercy upon us let your love come to us heal our hearts comfort our hearts take away our hurtful experiences take away our hearts oh Lord Jesus heal our hearts give us peace and joy give us love we need your love we need your joy and peace thank you Jesus now if we have been hurt by other people at this time try to have compassion on the person and say this person has been hurt by others so they have hurt us so we want to have compassion on them and we pray for them we bless them we forgive them we want the best to happen to them Lord help us to have compassion on them and forgive them and bless them and Lord come and heal our heart to take away our hurts in the heart to take away our negative emotions heal us of all the hurts 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, because you care about us. You are God of love. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can set us free. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. You can have joy again. We can have joy again. We can let go of the garbage and we can have joy. The people are not the garbage. It's their negative words and the negative emotions that affect us are garbage. We want to let go of those. We want to rejoice in you. We want to have joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. 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 And again I say rejoice. 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 And again I say rejoice. Oh Lord Jesus, give us joy and peace and love and care so that we can be healed, so we can forget about the past and we can uh, follow you faithfully and love you and enjoy you and be strengthened by you all the time. Only in you that we can find peace and joy and fulfillment. Only in you that we can find abundant life. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you for your love. Hallelujah. Now if you have heard ex hurtful experiences, you can blow out the feeling, the negative feeling. <sighs> blow out the negative feelings. Let God comfort us heal us all the negative feelings go away all the negative feelings go away and Lord please help us to forgive forgive us our unforgiveness if we un don't forgive people please forgive us and help us to forgive other people help us to be set free thank you Jesus thank you Jesus you're full of love thank you Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen hallelujah <laughs> so I hope that you have experienced some peace and and uh, comfort, uh, some healing in this. Uh, how can we assist someone who is unable to manage his emo emotions? Sometimes uh, they cannot manage their emotions because of psychiatric problem or because of the habit or because they, they don't have the habit of managing the emotions. Now for psychiatric people, we have to find out how uh, whether they can have any sense. If a person doesn't have any sense, then it's hard for him to manage. Then we pray for them, for the healing, uh, if they're willing to accept healing. Um, now for anyone who wants to manage their emotions, but they have a problem, then we ask them, like, do you, when you praise God, do you feel more peaceful? When you love God, do you feel more peaceful? Do you, when you dance to God, do you more feel more peaceful. If they feel more peaceful when they praise God, then we can say, well, I can see that when you praise God, you can improve. So you work on that more. You praise God more so that every day you're more peaceful. And when people have a lot of problems, a lot of problems, they cannot manage all the problems at the same time. They manage one problem at a time. For instance, maybe they can manage the emotions when they are alone. Okay. Or maybe they can manage their emotions when after someone hurts them, they walk out of the house and pray and then they can manage their emotions. So first is take the easier step. And then gradually, when he can manage the emotions outside, then he can try inside the house when someone is yelling at him, he tries to calm himself down and say, it doesn't matter, what he says doesn't matter. I don't have to take his negative words. I can rejoice in the Lord. Uh, he cannot hurt me, so I can relax and be healed, and I can try to be more peaceful. Now, many times I have been hurt by people. People yell at me, people say negative words, and in my heart, I will be saying this, okay? He's having some anger now. He's having some uh, problem now. If I fight with him now, it's no, there, is, there will be no, uh, no good result. So I would calm down, I would say, okay, thank you. I would try to pay attention to it. Uh, let's talk about it later when we calm down. And uh, I love you, I care about you, I want to have a good relationship with you. So try to say nice things. And, uh, and then just relax for now and then go away. And then later, manage it. So we have to manage it step by step. Only when a person has managed to take care of his emotions quickly that, that he can 
when someone is yelling at him that he can immediately calm down and then wait for this person to calm down. We have to wait for the person to calm down too. And uh, okay, in this situation, how about we rest for a little bit, wait for a little bit, and then we can talk about it in a moment. Now, if the person keep talking, keep talking, then we say, um, it doesn't seem to solve the problem. How about we calm down for now, and then I'm happy to talk with you more about the problem. And if I did anything wrong, I'm sorry, uh, I try to manage it. So step by step, the person learned to manage his emotions. And uh, then gradually he can overcome the emotions even when someone is yelling at him. But usually it's best to just calm down if someone is yelling. Just uh, say, uh, we'll, we'll take a rest for now, we'll relax for now, and then we'll talk about it later. Uh, and then sometimes it's not that serious. For instance, someone just says something that irritates us, but it's not very, very strong. Then we don't take it personally. If someone says, you cannot do it, we don't take it personally, we don't argue. And then we say, okay, I'll pay attention to that, thank you. Uh, let's talk about how we can solve the problem. So we try to be peaceful. In, inside our heart, we manage the emotions. So this has to come with a lot of training. But it's necessary, because if we don't manage our emotions, then our emotions will not be healthy, and our life will go downhill. For me, I want to you know, keep myself in the best condition, so I always manage my emotions. I don't want to uh, give people a bad impression. And so I always say, Lord, help me to calm down not to be affected by them, that I want to bless them. So I don't want them to be, uh, uh, I don't want my emotions, I don't want any emotion to come out to affect anyone. Okay, and then number three, how do we handle people who are not having the same faith? Uh, then what I've taught so far, there are two parts. One part is the, the part of coming to God for peace and for strength. Now that part, the non-Christians cannot do. But the other part, the non-Christian can use. Being aware of their negative feelings. So the five steps to victory. Being aware that they are aware of their negative thinking and feelings. And then secondly, that it's destructive to them because it would destroy the family, destroy their reputation, destroy their peace. Then number three, they don't have the Bible. So what does the common sense tell them to do? Now, and then we have to talk with them and say, can you accept this common sense that yelling doesn't solve the problem? Anger doesn't solve the problem. Only when we talk peacefully that we can solve problems. And we don't have to be angry with people uh, who offend us. Can we agree with these principles? If they agree, then they can manage it better, but not as well as the Christians. And then number four, they don't pray, but then they would use other method to motivate them to, to uh, take care of their emotions. And then number five, they can still choose to follow the, the right thinking, uh, the right thoughts instead of uh, the negative thinking and the, and the negative emotions. So they can, they can still use one part of the teaching, but they don't have the part of the, of the help of Jesus Christ.